Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. It's half past five in the morning and no, I haven't brushed my hair yet. But look at this morning, it is so glorious out. I could not get out and hedge bother. Now, of course, what we perceive of as being in the outdoor natural world today, well, it isn't, is it? It's very much a human construct. I'm in a lightly built up area. I've got a farmer's field to one side. I've got hedges, I've got roads, I've got street signs. But that doesn't mean that we still can't be affected by some of the same instincts, I suppose, that perhaps our earlier ancestors had. And for me, one of those is the urge at this time of year to make sure that I'm starting to put things away for later, for leaner times. Because actually, July, July is a slightly strange month. It looks like there's so much growing, and there certainly is, but those fresh new spring green growths are over. And the harvest, there's an oat field over here at the moment, well the harvest is quite a long way away yet. And I think that can make us feel a little bit anxious if we're out in it every day. Even if we, we know that today we've got enough food, we can go to the shops, we can buy things. Those of us that go out foraging do recognise that this you know, is a bit of a special time of year. So putting things by for later is great. And today I'm going to do a very, very short video on putting fibres by for use later in the year. Here's some horseradish and monks and nettles. I'm definitely going to have some of that. The central rib makes an excellent cordage fibre, but also I think I'm going to try it as the core in a coil basket this winter. Haven't got time to do it now, but picking and preparing the fibres now will definitely give me material to work on later in the year. When it's cold, it's wet, and I don't want to be outside at five in the morning. I can see the seasons shifting before my very eyes when I go out for my morning walks. We've got bittersweet, that's woody nightshade. Here in the hedges, those beautiful glowy berries and the little, the little purple flowers. There's still meadow sweet out. The first of the blackberries are just starting to ripen. Lots of nettle seed to be picked at the moment as well. Beautiful skies. When it's not raining, this is Britain, of course. And all of these add up to give you the sense that the season is rushing past and you really need to be getting on with things. I tend to walk the same mile most mornings and the tactic that works for me at this time of the year is little and often so. There is a beautiful burdock here and it's right bang in the way where the gate opens so I won't hurt anything by taking that one out. Stinging nettles too. I tend to find five is a really good number for an early morning pick. It doesn't take me five, ten minutes to peel and roughly scrape those. It does mean that a ten minute stop on a 20 minute walk, I can put a fair bit of material by for later projects. So I'm not going to go into detail today on actually how to prepare these. I do have other videos on horseradish, on burdock, or on nettles, but the principles are very similar for most of them. It's remove external greenery, didn't do that one very well, doesn't really matter. Uh, split them in half, give them a little bash if necessary, peel out the fibres, give them a scraping to get them as clean as possible. I'll crack on with that lot. And 10 minutes later, I've got a little pile of mostly, but not quite completely processed fibre. So that's a nettle, five nettles worth. That's a horseradish, sort of three stalks worth. I messed one up a bit. The burdock, actually, that's just the stems of two leaves. The stalk I picked in the end turned out to be really past it, really, really woody and coarse. Not what I want for this purpose. So you know, plants differ. Some days you've got to use different areas of them. So if I just put these away now, they would fester. They're really wet, they're really soft, and they're not quite there yet. So I'm going to take them home, do just five minutes more prep on them, and then we'll put them to dry and get them ready to be put away for the autumn. Once you get your fibres home, if they need a bit more cleaning up, do that, but otherwise just have them to dry. I just happen to tend to put my nettles around the neck of a dressmaker's dummy. It just, it's there, it's convenient. And other fibres I just lie in a heap. Now I often add fresh ones to old ones. So this is burdock um, and my new tiny little bit of burdock I've just put on the pile on top of it helps me remember what's going on. Oh, and remember to shake my current hair potion while I'm at it. That's a different video entirely. So time for a cup of tea, let these dry and then we'll sort them out for storage. 
Of course, if you're out foraging for supplies every day and putting them to dry here and there, it's ever so easy for things to get out of hand. So, if you know me in real life, that means you, Mum, please don't panic. I'm about to tidy up. Oh, all right. It's not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better. The point that I'm trying to make, even if you're a really messy person like me, is that if you can see what you've collected, it's much easier to work out how to store it. And the important thing is to make sure that this lot gets put away dry and in a way where I can tell what it is later. It's really easy to think when you start collecting materials that you've got to remember exactly what you've got, but you know what life's like. You might put this away and only come back to it a year later, by which point are you going to remember the difference between the burdock stalk, bit of bramble cordage, the horseradish, whether your nettles were lightly scraped or not scraped at all, or scraped and rubbed. There's so many things that could affect what you remember about the processing. So this year I'm trying just winding things up into coils, sticking a label on them, it's just a, a business card tied on, and then they're all going into a hessian bag. Paper bag would be fine, big basket would be fine, really doesn't matter. The magic trick of it all is just that things should be dry, slightly airy. You don't want any lingering moisture that's in your fibres to go mouldy or fusty or just generally get into a bit of a, a state while you store them. So I'm going to wind these up, I'm going to pop them in my bag, that will clear my little bit of drying space ready for me to get out and hedge bother and get some more together. So enjoy the summer, don't worry too much about the autumn creeping up on us, but it is a really good time to put some things by for the autumn and the winter, for those times where you can't go out and play in the outdoors, but you want to settle down and do some crafting with the fruits of your labours. Happy hedge bothering! <laughs>